Black Bear's Picnic, Chapter 5 Out of Our Fur After months of searching for him, Ethan had finally found him. He let go of his embrace with version 0, who was slumped on the dusty floor of the warehouse, and crouched down alongside him. Let's get you out of here. My dad's waiting outside. Just remember how we got out that first night we met, yeah? It really is nice to see you again. I've been looking everywhere. Both of them carefully tread through some more junk-filled rooms. It seemed like every corner of this building had various objects stacked up everywhere. Boxes, crates, spare car parts, tables, chairs, even some mascots from other companies. Eventually, they reached some sort of delivery area. Garage doors lined one wall, with a few of them having trucks backed into them. We're going to have to be careful. People might still be here. Ethan and Version Zero slowly wandered through, using stacked up crates and forklifts as cover. There was no sign of anyone in the area, but Ethan still remained cautious. There's an open garage door over here with no truck parked in it. They crept around the front of one of the trucks, Ethan leading the way. He peeked his head around to see if anybody was there, and it was all clear. However, just as he was about to turn the corner, a vehicle pulled around, its blinding headlights flooding in. Go around the other side, quick! Ethan rushes over behind the parked truck, dragging version zero over with him. You really are alive for how tall you are. Quiet! Ah, hello, sir. It's good to see you. Would you like to come with me to the office? Ah, <sighs> that was a close one. I think there's a way out over here. Come on, Ethan. What's taking you so long? As Ethan's dad impatiently waits for him, he spots the fluorescent light flicker on through the window he let Ethan through. Oh no. Hurry up, kid. Ethan? Out of the darkness, Ethan emerged, holding on to Version Zero's hand, who was following behind. What, what? What is that thing? Hey, wait! It's the mascot suit we came here for, remember? Yeah, but it, it's like moving around on its own and stuff. It's looking right at me. <sighs> Look, Dad, this is Version Zero. He's what I've been looking for all this time. Um... Ethan's dad reluctantly stretched his hand out for a handshake. Version Zero looks blankly at him. I don't think he understands what you're doing. Suddenly, Version Zero reached out to his hand, gripping it and shaking it stiffly and slowly. <clears throat> uh, well then, uh, this one's way more advanced than the one you made. Hey! So, let me get this straight. You're picking it up early? Wait, hang on a second. Yes, that's right. There's been a slight change of plans, so I've been asked to pick up the suits now. Him! Ethan's dad begins storming towards the warehouse entrance, before Ethan grabs his arm and pulls him back. Dad, stop! I ought to go in there and teach him a lesson for messing with it's you. It's not worth it. You'll only be pulled into all of this. I feel like I already am. And are you sure you're alright, sir? I mean, that's kind of a nasty bruise on your head. Never mind that now. So can I take the suit or what? Well, we did have a guy and his kid trying to pick them up not too long ago. Do you know him? What? Yeah, they left a little while ago now. <sighs> I knew it. So where are they at? Both the prototype and version 1 suit should be in here. Adam's suit was in there? Damn it! I could have gotten him out too. Where is it? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. It, it was here just a second ago. No, no. Impossible. Do a full search of the building now. I'm sorry, sir, but it's going to take a little while for me to search for it all by myself. You better do as I ask, or else I will tell my boss that you lost one of our most precious animatronics. <sighs> Whatever you say. This is impossible. How in the hell could he have got it? <sighs> we should go before we attract any more attention. Where are we going to go? If we go home, then where are we going to hide your... strange friend? <sighs> Last time I tried hiding him in my room, then Mom almost found out. 
It was a really close call. I mean, maybe we should just tell her. How bad could it be? I don't know, Ethan. She got upset with me taking a hamster home without telling her, let alone a seven-foot robot bear. I think it's worth a shot. Come on, let's go home. Right, well, if she goes crazy, then I'll take the blame. You two were out for a while. I was starting to get worried. What on earth even happened to you, Ethan? You've got scrapes and bruises all over you. Mom, I got someone I want you to meet. Ethan's dad opens the back door of the car as version zero slowly scrambles out. He straightens himself up, readjusts his head with a click, and stomps over to Ethan's mom, stiffly waving at her. Ethan, don't tell me this is what you've been looking for all this time. Yes, I'm sorry I couldn't explain everything sooner, Mom. This is version zero. He was the mascot of Crafty's Crafts. He might be a robot, or he might be alive. Neither of us know. What I do know is that there's something special about him, and that he might know more about what's happening at Crafty Crafts if we just jog his memory. Oh my god. Ethan grabs his mom's arm and pulls her to the side. Mom, before you freak out, just listen. I need you to trust me on this one. I know version zero looks big and frightening on the outside, but he's soft at heart. Since we first met, he's been really kind to me. You've done some weird stuff before, but I'm really not sure about this one. Do you remember Peter's birthday where he brought that one friend over? He really looked like a troublemaker, didn't he? <laughs> You're right, he did. And guess what happened? He ended up being a really nice kid. He always said please and thank you for everything. It's not any different here. At least try and get to know him before judging him. Well, try and get to know him the best you can since he can't talk. I I'll try. They joined back with version zero. Ethan's mom walking up to him and leaning close, inspecting his details and movements. Uh, do you want to come inside? Version zero? Wow, she took that way better than the hamster, huh? But Ethan, is it definitely safe to be around this version zero? Of course! I may not know much about who he used to be, but he's been really nice to me. No, I don't mean it like that. Is him being with us putting us in danger? Your old boss seemed like he really wants him back. I don't actually know. Hmm. Ethan and his dad stroll back inside the house and into the living room. His mom is sitting down on the couch next to version zero. Oh, hello, boys. We were just talking. Well, it was just me talking. Mom, you're not mad or anything, are you? <sighs> the only thing I'm mad about is that you didn't tell me all of this sooner. Do you not trust me, Ethan? No, it's not that. I just didn't think anyone would believe me that I found an animatronic bear that was responding to me. Right. Look, it's fine. I'll find somewhere else to keep version zero. Upon hearing this, version zero lunges forward and clings onto Ethan's arm. I'm sorry. Ethan, he can stay with us. Really? I mean, I really wasn't sure at first, but I see how important he is to you. He clearly needs our help. Well, since you've told us everything that's going on, I think it's time that we tell you something, Ethan. Oh? Me and your mother have been thinking about moving houses. It's just been too difficult staying here ever since, well, we lost Peter. Um, besides, with everything going on at the moment with you and your old boss, maybe it'll keep our whole family safer. I understand. I really didn't think either of you would listen to me. You can talk to us, Ethan. If anything else happens, then you let us know. Thank you. Thank you for helping version zero. It's okay. It's the best we could do. Come on, I'll show you around the house. This time you can see it with the lights on. <laughs> Oh, version zero. You scared me. Brushing your fur, I see. <laughs> I smell breakfast. 
I'll meet you there, okay? Hello, honey. Hey. Hi. You're up late. Do you not have work today? Yeah, I got the day off. Have you heard they're upgrading the computers at work to Windows 95? Really? Well, you should know. You're the one with the lead technician promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just woke up. Ah, I was just wondering when you were coming down. Did you sleep well? Oh, right. Uh, I've been meaning to talk to you two about something. Me and Version Zero have been looking for somewhere else to live for a few months now, and we finally found a decent apartment. I know you guys are happy for us to live here, but I've been delaying moving up for years now. I have plenty of money saved up for it. You don't want to let me go, and that's okay, but trust me, we'll be fine. <sighs> we understand, Ethan. Of course we do. Are you sure this is what you want? I think it's the right time. It's just, I... I don't want anything to happen to you. Everything that happened in 1985 with Peter, I can't let the same thing happen to you. Mom, it's been nine years since we last heard from them. If Crafty HQ still wanted me or Version Zero, then we would have heard from them by now. Well, as long as you're sure about that, then we support you. Of course, just stay safe. It'll be nice to finally get rid of you. Dad! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, version zero. Should we practice some writing? Alright, we'll just be in the living room if you need us. I know you don't like doing this, but we've got to. We've tried replacing your voice box so many times, but so far, none of them have worked. Look on the bright side. I'm getting really close to finishing that communication program. Soon you might actually be able to speak. Right, let's try and write your name. So, start with a V. Version Zero grips onto the pen and slowly creates a V-shape. It ends up looking very shaky. Now the letter E. He attempts to draw an E, but his grip slips, causing the pen to fly onto the table and the letter to become ruined. <sighs> I'm sorry, Version Zero. It's those big hands of yours. I know we've been practicing this for a few years now, but I'm sure you'll get the hang of it eventually. Hey, uh, there's a letter for you over by the front door. It came this morning. Huh? I never get mail. Ethan rips into the envelope and pulls the letter out, unfolding it. Says it's from someone called Sam McCoy. I feel like I know that name. Do you? At the mere mention of the name, version zero jumps up and begins to panic and shudder. Oh, right. Wasn't Sam one of the names I suggested to you when we first met? Jeez, that was so long ago. Ethan eventually decides to read through the mysterious letter. Dear Mr. Jones, I am writing to inform you about your involvement with Crafty HQ and, by extension, the Crafty's Crafts establishment. We've been hard at work trying to contact you ever since you moved out of state roughly nine years ago. I personally want to invite you to my office in the company's main headquarters at the attached address. I also ask that you take the Crafty the Bear animatronic that was stolen from our premises. Although this meeting isn't mandatory, a substantial consequence will be considered if it is rejected. We've never had the chance to meet, yet I feel that it's never too late. I look forward to seeing you here. Yours sincerely, Sam McCoy. CEO of Crafty HQ. No, no! Surely not! I must be going crazy! This can't be happening! Right when I think they've left us alone, they come back! I can't keep doing this version zero. <sighs> we have no choice. We're gonna have to go there. I know it's clearly some sort of trap, but at least we'd be prepared for it. Look, it's likely this Sam might know stuff about you. We could finally get some answers. I'll let Mom and Dad know that we're leaving. Hey, Mom. Dad? I forgot to tell you that I'm going out for a couple of days tomorrow. Oh? Where are you going off to? It's just a little road trip. Nothing to worry about. Version Zero is going to be coming with me, too. Oh, no. That ain't happening. He has to stay in this house, remember? 
Dad, we'll be fine, trust me. This really isn't a good idea, Ethan. You were the one that swore not to put Version Zero in any more risk. Me and Version Zero were really looking forward to it. And it's only going to be a small camping trip in the woods across town. Mary, I think they'll be fine. Just for God's sake, please be careful. Of course we'll be careful. We'll leave tomorrow morning. We should probably leave some time to pack some of our stuff and plan our route. Look, I know you don't like this idea, but we've got no other choice. I'm tired of putting myself in danger. I'm tired of putting other people in danger. Now that we finally have a chance to talk to the CEO, we might be able to convince him to leave us alone. We've been in plenty of dangerous situations before. As long as we have each other's back, we'll be fine. End of chapter five. To be continued.